Hello and welcome to Crown Talk Art here in the southwest of England in Western Supermare. It's a lovely sunny day here today which means that the nursery at the back of us have put the children out in the garden for a bit so if you hear any noise of children laughing and doing all the things that kids do that's where it's coming from. So today we're going to have a go at making an otter. This time uh, it's going to be lying on its back but it's still a ball otter. But there is a difference with this one, whereas with the other ball animals I've done, we've actually made them by making pitch pots. This one is entirely made from slabs. So I've got a template, various pieces, uh, which will be available on Etsy. Uh, in each case, I've cut out the template, stuck it to a piece of cardboard to make it a bit firmer. And then I've cut out the pieces. So on it, it tells you how many pieces to cut. So I've cut two bodies, uh, two heads, uh, sorry, one head, a tail, feet, and all the rest of it and we're going to put it together to make this fella. So first of all we're going to sort out the body. This is one of the slabs I've got for the body and on the, the template you'll see there are a number of lines and we need to cut the, the clay to match up with these lines but it's basically a clock face so if you want to you can actually cut through them so you've got something to, to use or you can just do it ad lib which is what I'm going to do. Whatever you do it's a good idea to try and find something that's about the size of that blank area which you can use to, as a marker to show how far you can and can't cut. So I'm going to use this as a starting point, put it down there. I'm going to get my knife and then I'm going to cut in at six o'clock, 12 o'clock, let's move it so you can see a bit better, three o'clock, nine o'clock, and then in between, so four o'clock and five o'clock, Try to be careful not to do what I've just done, which is cut it a bit too close there, otherwise it's going to snap off. Okay, and then three on there as well. So another two there, between those two. And then here at seven o'clock and eight o'clock. And then in there. Ah, so you'll end up with a piece that looks a bit like that. Let's put that to one side. Next thing I'm going to do, make sure it's not stuck to the board, I'm going to get some slip. And I'm going to paint it along the edge of each one of these petals, if you like. Like that. Now, you want the clay to be fairly firm, or it be too soggy, but you want it to be workable, so you don't want it to be cracking as you're working on it. So what we're going to do then is I take it in my hand, and I'm going to start overlapping these pieces. So I overlap that one onto there, like that, about quarters of a centimetre. Do the same again there. So be careful they don't crack. So I'm going to get them in my hand now. I'm going to curve it up so that as I'm working I'm starting to form it into a bowl shape. Okay, all the way around. Like that. Each one overlapping. Try to get them all overlapping the same way. Bring that off there. That's going to go there. One's there. And then lastly that one like that. And you see how it's started to form a little bowl shape. Now, what I'm going to do next is to make sure this all stays together. So I'm going to get my good old lollipop stick, which I use for almost everything. And I'm just going to go around and smooth these joins together on the inside. There we go. Just make sure that's overlapped a little bit more there. You see, it's, the clay's a little dry, so it is breaking apart a little bit, but I can correct that when I get to it. Try to get them fairly even in the way that you put them together with the overlap. All right, that as well. Let's just seal that one down now. Okay. And it ends up with like a sort of a cup shape. Okay. Now, you do that with the other one as well. I've already done the other one, so I've got the two. So what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to join these two together. So I get a knife, I've got to go around the top of both of them, all these flat edges, both, like that, and I can put some slip on it, like that, and then put the two together. Now hopefully because you're working from the template, they should be pretty much the same level. You shouldn't have big holes in it, but you'll end up with something that looks a bit like that. Now to make sure it stays together, we get a bit of working clay. 
way. I'll take that out of the way too. And I'm going to roll a coil, which is going to go right round that and see. Let me just move these feet out of the way. There we go. So I've got some room to work. So remember, when you're making a coil, start off rolling it between your hands. Get it a bit more coil-like. Then get it on the board. Long rolls without just a little bit of pressure. Not too much, otherwise it'll go square. Give yourself plenty of room to work. Make sure that you're using, you can see the dampness on my fingers. So I'm using, I'm rolling from there all the way up as much as possible. Okay. And I'm going to take my object and I'm going to put some slip round again. Make sure we've got plenty of slip. Let's do it all up with. Put that round like that. If it's not long enough, don't panic. Just get a little bit more clay. If it's too long, just cut it off. All the way around. Okay, now we've got to smooth this down. Before we start smoothing these sections in though, I'm just going to make sure it's sealed. So again, I'm going to get my tool and I'm going to stroke it down onto one side and up onto the other. You mean to fill in any gaps. So it's a nice ball of air trapped in there. So it's going to be a bit like working with a balloon, if I got it right. All the way around. Like that. Right, now we start to make this look a bit more like a ball and a bit less like a very strange modern sculpture article. So first thing I do is just roll it a bit on that join. But then I'm going to get my wooden tool again and I'm going to smooth in all of these pieces that were folded over. And in doing so, I'll probably take away some of the clay as well, but that's, that's okay. So you scrape it off a bit because it's quite thick where it's been overlaid. Get like that all the way. That one side, same on the other side. Okay. Collapsing a little bit there, so I'm just push it back in again. I'll try now. So this method will give you a ball. It does take a little bit longer to do than maybe a pinch pot version, but if you're very, if you can't do pinch pots, this is a, a good way of doing it, of getting where you want to be. So I get it all smoothed in. Oh, missed a bit there. A bit smoothed in there. That's something trapped in there. It's plastic or something. Get that out. Okay. All right. And now we start patting it into ball shape. Now, ideally, you should have a ball, a bowl rather, that you can roll your ball in. To improve it but I haven't got one here today so I'm just going to do it by hand and each time I do it you see how it's getting better and better less and less like some sort of strange space animal and more and more like a ball and keep working it now if you find it's starting to get a little dry mine is a little dry here get a sponge now be very careful when you start to introduce water to clay if you put too much water in you're going to get that so you just want a little bit so this is slightly moist but not wet and I can do that and then work it into the clay and that will help to get rid of the cracks. If you add too much water, you'll start to wash out the clay itself and leave behind the additives that they put into clay to make it strong, known as grog. So we don't want to do that. So I keep working it. I say this process will take slightly, slightly longer than a pinch pot. Okay, right on the board. One more. And if you find you've got bits that you really can't get filled in, I mean, I've got a crack forming there, which is not good. So I'm going to get a little bit of clay and I'm going to put some slip onto that crack and pack it into the crack. Really work it in. Be careful not to trap air under anything you add on. But really work it in like that. Oh, some cracks forming there. 
so I'm going to wet those a little bit. So some of this is a little bit getting a little dry. Okay. And the more you work it, the more it becomes the body of an otter. Again, a little bit of moisture on there. Lock it in. Some holes there, so let's uh, a little bit of clay in there. Rub it in. There we go. That. In there. Yeah, give it a roll. Now I could spend more time on getting this smoother and better. I'm not going to worry too much though because we're now going to start to add bits to it and they will cover up some of these bits that are not great and if they don't then I'll sort them out afterwards. I'm going to put a little bit in there though it's, that is a little bit of a deep pit there so I get a little bit of clay, plenty of slip, rub it in, get it smooth. If you've got access to things like um, kidneys, rubber kidneys you can use those. You can, of course, also use things like credit cards and store cards. They're old, old ones, of course. They're great. Again, plastic cards. Um, I've seen somebody use a plastic spatula, take the spatula off its wooden handle, and use that as a as a kidney. Once you really get into pottery, you start seeing your kitchen implements in a whole new way. Crack form in there. So let's just work that in a bit. Okay. So. We have a body, now we've got to do the head. So the head's done in the same way. We have a template and we have a disc of clay. Now again, you want to find something that'll go in there, but if you can't find anything, that actually the cheek, which is quite small, will do just as well. So we'll put that in there to give me something to guide towards. This time though, we don't have to do a full clock. You'll find the bits fall off. All we need to do is go top and bottom. Up. To the side like that and then in the middle there so we cut it six times instead of twelve is that right one two three five six seven nah I can't do maths but not as many as the other one anyway like that that's one side so we get something like this then we do the same again so we start by putting some slip just on the edge of each one that's going to be overlapped. Like that. Then again, we overlap them. So get it in your hand. And then we'll make a tight little cup with this. And then each one overlaps it the other, like that. And the other way around. Nice and tight. The tighter you can make this one, the better. You want it to be quite a sort of compact thing. So this is going to be the fella's head over here. So again, once you've done that and you've got it all nice and tight like that, again, get your tool, smooth the joints down so you join it all and fix it all. Like that. Okay, and then this time, as we're not going to put two pieces together, we just have the one, we've now got to smooth this down into making the head. So again, we get on this and we smooth each piece down that. Tool's getting a bit dirty. Right. That whole way around. Right. Right. Get a little cap like that. So this is going to be the basis of his head. Again, I'm going to now get the sponge. I'm just going to smooth that down as much as I possibly can. And actually, I want to sort of curve it in a little bit at the top, so it's a bit more, a bit more rounded. And then it's nice and tight. That a bit of sponge on it just to wet it a tiny bit. Work that water in. So just a tiny little bit. 
like that. So it's a little cup like that. So I'm just going to have to smooth this off as much as I can. There we go. So now we've got a body and a head. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to construct the tail before I put it together. So the tail starts off as a triangle. You've got a long edge and you've got two slightly shorter edges. So on the template itself, it's that way around. Okay, so the, where it says ball auto template across the top, that's the bit that's going to connect to the body. So these two sides are going to go together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score all the way down these two edges. Like that, and the same on that side. I'm going to get some slip on it. Whoop, not that brush. It's huge. I've been attacked by slip. Right, so get some slip on there. I don't need to do it on both sides. One will be enough. And then we coax it around. And you get those two corners together like that. Wiggle them till they stop moving. And then you basically zip it up. So you tuck it in all the way down like that. Down to a point like that. Now, to keep these two pieces, these two sides together, again, you're going to need a little bit of working clay and you'll need, need to put a coil up the inside there. So, again, I'm going to make a little piece of clay that can go in there. I'm going to put a little bit of slip up there just to be sure. We'll put that in like that. Then I'm going to find my tool, which I've buried underneath my sponge. There we go. And I'm going to smooth that in on that side and then onto the other side. So across the join. Make it nice and strong. You're never going to see the inside of this again, so it doesn't have to be overly tidy, but it does have to be done properly so that it will stick it all together. Then I'm going to turn it round, and of course I've got a little crack here that's formed during the joining process, so I'm going to get another little bit of clay, and I'm going to roll a very little piece of coil, and paint a little bit of slip in that gap, and I'm just going to drop it into that to help smooth it out. Then with my finger inside to support it, I get my tool and I smooth it down. This coil is more uh, to make it look good rather than actually be structural. So this is more about tidying it up. You see, I'm struggling to get it smooth now because my, my tool is really dirty. So I'm just going to scrape that off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give my tool a little wash. And over here I've got a towel, so I'm just going to wipe it off. So we get it clean so they can work with it. You see the difference that makes just by getting it a little bit cleaner. Okay, right, and the same goes for your fingers as well. If your fingers are getting dirty, wash them, dry them off on a towel. You don't want wet fingers or you're going to have the same problem as if you've got a wet sponge, and that will also help with the smoothing process. So we've got all of our component parts for our otter now. Now to start putting them together. So I start with my body. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to decide what's going to be the top and what's going to be the bottom of my otter. So I think on this one, I might go, because that's not great, that, so I might put that on the bottom. So move that little again a little bit. So that's going to be the bottom of my otter. So having decided that, I put him on the board. I give him a little tap just to flatten it off a bit so that he doesn't feel the urge to roll off the table. Then I get my head, and you've got to have the head quite high up on the body. But, of course, we have a pocket of air in here. So if we're going to fire this, if we don't allow that air to escape somehow the head is going to blow off. So the most obvious way to do that is to actually have a pocket, allow the air to travel from the head into the body and then eventually from the body out. So we'll have an, an air hole at the end. So as I say, the head goes quite high, so it's going to go about there. So having worked that out, put your knife in nice and deep, give it a good twist. And if you're not sure whether you've gone through or not, pick your ball up and blow in it. And you should hear it echo a bit like you're blowing in a bottle. Now I'm going to take my head Again, I'm going to score all the way around the top, like that. I'm going to get some slip. Again, I put that all the way around, like that, and then attach it like that. So tuck it in. He does have a neck, not much of one, but he has have a little bit. So we tuck it all in like that. And then you get your tool and you smooth it in. best you can 
to start with. We may yet still have to put coil around, but to start with, we just get this smoothed in as good as we can manage. Like that. Because what I want to do is I don't want to have his neck too thick. And if I add a big coil in, that's going to lose the neck. So I want to try and use some of this clay. Because of the, the way we've built this using slabs, of course, the, the head is quite thick. So we can actually pull some of the clay down off the head to join it. And this means we're not going to get air trapped underneath a coil. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to just smooth that down. A little bit concerned. He is a little dry, so he is cracking a little bit, fella. Yeah, let's just wet you up again. Okay. Right. So a little time now spent getting this smooth will be well rewarded, especially the top of the head. Yeah, let's just smooth that down. Okay. So the next thing we're going to add to him is his face. Now, among the pieces to cut out are two cheeks. Now these are quite fiddly to cut out. So the best way to cut them out is to actually cut get out there, to cut it square and then cut off to make sort of like a hex shape, a bit like that. And then then smooth it rather than try to cut around it because you'll find them quite tricky. A little concern these might got a bit hard. So the weather here has suddenly gone from nothing ever drying to everything drying in seconds. So smooth that down. Same with this one. So I did the same again. I cut it out using straight sides. So I'm just going to get a little bit of water on that because it is getting a little hard and round it off. Okay. So hopefully they're about the same size. One looks a bit smaller, which is weird because I use the same template. Okay. So these are then going to go quite high up. So he's, he's almost sort of looking forward on, onto his belly. So they go like that. So again, I get my knife, I score the back of them. I get a slip on them. Okay, I'm just going to put it in position. I'm not going to fix it just yet until I've got the other one on so that I know they've got them both in the right place. Like that. They go together nice and tight and then wiggle them like that until they stop moving. So let's do the same with that one. Like that. And then we get the nose. Again, quite a tricky one to cut out. So you can, if you don't want to use that, you could just use a little bit of clay and make it into sort of like a triangular shape. And that goes there. And that then slots between the two. And then you push it down like that to give you that sort of nose shape. And then we get our tool. And this, I am going to add a little bit more clay to this. So again, tiny, tiny little worm, which I'm going to put over the top of his nose. So I'm going to dip it in the slip going to go over there like that and then smooth down. The noise you can hear in the background by the way is uh, Emma hard at work making our Highland cows which we sell all around the country. We just had another big order in. So she is in Highland cow mode, big style. Okay, so I'll just shape his face up. Okay, so we've got a little face there. Next we need to give him a lower lip. And this is just a little bit of clay. I haven't bothered with a template for this because it's be about the size of a pea. So you get a little bit of piece of clay like that, as I say, about the size of a pea. Dip it in the slip, drop it underneath, and then push it in. So again, I'm going to smooth that down. Make sure it's stuck. Give him his lower lip. Okay. Next, we're going to give him some eyes. And uh, for that purpose, I'm going to use the back end of a paintbrush. I'm going to use this one, like that. So I'm going to put his eyes pointing straight forward, so above his nose, about there. Put one eye in and do the same on the other side, about there. Okay. Now, on this particular one, I'm going to have quite small eyes. On the other one, the eyes were a bit bigger, but I have little eyes on this one, I think. Like that. See, he's already starting to get a bit of character now. So I get a bit of clay. And again, as you know, if you've followed any of my videos before, I like to make things like eyes and ears. I make two at the same time because hopefully you get them both the same size, but also the same consistency. You don't want one soggy eye and one wet eye. So I made an eyeball. 
that is far too big but I'm hoping that by the time I've cut that in half that will be spot on so let's go down here where you can see so line it up as best you can that's it now again my hands are really dirty again so I'm going to clean them in the wash dry them off on the towel over here because again if my hands are too much covered in clay I'm not going to get these round my fingers are too wet let's just dry that off again so now I'm going to roll that round make a ball like that. so that's one eyeball make another eyeball getting eyeballs right is not easy so if you have to do it two or three times don't worry about it quite often I do and I'm not even sure these might be a bit too small but let's have a look see now they're going to be perfect right so now the really tricky bit Obviously, you can't scratch these and score them. So what I'm going to do is a tiny little bit, a little bit slip on the end. You want to make sure that's going to go in the right place. You don't want to have that on the outside. That's got to go on the inside like that. One eye there. Wrong paintbrush. Let's try that one. Again, tiny little drop of slip on it. And then drop that into the socket like that. That's good. So he's looking better than the last one, which is good. Next, you need some ears. Otherwise, he's going to look too much like a seal. He probably does look a bit like a seal at the moment. And as you can imagine, this is the sort of basic shape for making a seal, if that's what you want to do. Only, obviously, you don't have paws. You have flippers instead. So I'm going to make, to make the ears, I'm going to make a coil. Move over. Right. Try to make it even for at least part of its length. And then I'm going to cut it into two pieces about a centimetre long, like that. Okay. Then each end I'm just going to roll into a point, like that. Do the same on this one, like that, and that. Then that one's grown a bit, so that's going to lose a little bit of its end. I want them both the same size, that's better. And then what we do is we add, we bend them round, make a little curve like that, a little bit of slip on them, and then over here. So they go in a line between the ear, the eye, sorry, the nose, the eye and the ear, like that. Okay, that's one of them. And then the other one, same again, make a little curve, like that, put a bit of slip on it. Again, put it on there. Okay. Then I'm going to flip him round. I'm going to get my tool. And, uh, on this particular tool, I've actually, this particular lollipop stick, I've sharpened to a point at one end, just with a pair of scissors. And I'm just going to use that sharper end just to smooth that in on the back. Get that one. Same on here. Okay, so the next thing our otter's going to have, no otter's complete without a tail. So here's the tail I made earlier. Now, you can see it's sort of very high at one end, and that's because that's the end that goes down on the bottom. So, again, decide where your tail's going to go, make sure it's in line with his nose, and then make a hole into the body, as before, make sure you go through, and then score the tail all the way around, like that, plenty of slip on it. So this is getting a little bit hard now, so this is getting harder and harder to work. And then we attach his tail. Like that. So say make sure it's on straight. Now this is going to need a coil to support it. So again, get a little bit of clay, roll it. Put slip all the way around where you need to put it. Really make sure you work this coil into that crack so that there's no air trapped. Okay, get my tool again, smooth it up onto the body, down onto the tail, make a good strong join. If you're wondering why my slips are different colours, I've mentioned before, we're sort of halfway between two different clay suppliers. And although the clay's all the same colour after firing, until it's fired, one is slightly redder than the other. Okay, so smooth those down on the bottom there as well. 
Okay, and again, spend a little bit of time now with your fingers, just smoothing out that join so you hide it. Again, if you're finding it's difficult, your fingers are too, too much clay on them, then just give them a rinse, get the clay off, dry them. There we go. Right, so he has a tail. Next, we need some feet. So I've got the feet here, four feet. And all they are are basically triangles. So what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to score the back of them. Like that, put some slip on it. And then one foot goes there. Well, they've all four feet here I've done exactly identical. Up to you if you want to try and modify them a bit. Make them a bit your own. On there. He's got his little paws resting on his chest. And then his back feet. Same again, score. Put some slip on. Again, down by his tail. One foot there. One foot there. That. Okay. Then, again, I'm just going to smooth these down. I'm going to have a little bit of a coil, just a little bit around the end where the, where the triangle attaches to the body. Like that. And the same there. And the same here. Oops, a little thinner. And there. I'm not putting more slip on because you can see the slip's oozing out there. But I might have to put a little bit more here. Whoop, and back here. And do that. And a little bit more. Just to be on the safe side. Then again, using my tool, okay, smooth the flipper, or his foot, whatever you want to call it, his leg, into that coil and smooth it down. Like that. Loop it in. There we go. That's nice and well attached. Oh, same here. Like that. Stick it in. Same here. So all four feet again, bits of clay stuck to me. Move that in like that. So one bit there. And let's move that in there. You can see the marks that it's leaving. That's because there's so much clay stuck to it at the moment that it's unable to be create a smooth finish. I'm just going to give that another wash. Wipe it off in the towel. In case you're wondering, yes, we do do a lot of towel washing. Something like that. flippers. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get a pencil and I'm now going to mark his fingers on it. So what I'm going to do is just going to use the pencil pressed in like that and make some little fingers as it were. Like that. And the same here on his back feet. Same here. Like that. Then I'm going to also use the pencil now to make some little eye eyes on him. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to make him a little bit cross-eyed because I think they're rather cute when they look a little bit cross-eyed. Like that. Okay. A little, I'm just going to use that pencil just to mark that back out again because I've marred it a bit. So there we have our basic otter. Then if you want to do the fish, we have the fish template here cut out. So what I've done is I've thinned out the tail a bit and thinned out the fins. And you just use the pencil then just to sort of give it some fins. Give it an eye. Mark off the face. Like that. And then you can either use your pencil or at the end of your knife to give him some scales. Like that. Again, the more time you spend doing this, the better it will look.
Okay, and then you could stick his stick his fish on like that with a bit of slip and scraping. So last thing to do, let's just take that off for a moment. Last thing to do, very important if you're going to fire it, remember to turn it upside down. Get your knife, get right in there, give it a twist. Make sure you've got a hole into the body so the air from the head and the tail can get into the body and can then escape. And there we go, one otter all ready to go. So I hope that was useful for you and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.